Okay, so now that you've unloaded all of the uh, volumes, so here's the final one, I'm just going to CD into my main directory, so I'm not using the uh, image anymore, and just hit eject. So there we go. Now we've uh, ejected from all of the uh, volumes that were loaded up, because we already modified it to uh, make it bootable. Now what you want to do is run the following command. So here it is. Uh, your file names might differ, but essentially this is what you'll be typing out. hdiutil convert lion.dmg space uh, dash format udto uh, dash little o and then lion.iso. So what's basically what you're saying is convert my dmg into a iso file. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and uh, just to double check what I've done here is created lion1.dmg so I'll do the same thing but uh, convert my uh, notice I've done these steps already and they're working with lion.dmg I'm just gonna follow them and do it for lion1.dmg alright so I'm gonna leave this running and uh, it should probably take about three minutes oops D desktop and it's because I'm working on desktop it's easier to just navigate to it because you it's already open and it's easier to demonstrate so I suggest you do the same thing when you're working on it just dump everything onto the uh, desktop one thing to note uh, when you're doing this procedure of HDI util blah 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 is that it will create a an ISO.CDR image so basically this is the final step of removing uh, the .cdr extension and as soon as it finishes here it should typically take about three minutes maybe less uh, but for sake of time saving I'm gonna pause it again and we'll come back as soon as this procedure is finished okay so here we go it took a little longer than seven minutes but uh, essentially it depends on how many processes you have running and how much you've allocated to the virtual machine so here's the newly generated lion1.iso.cdr like I said you want it to be an ISO so you want to delete the extension .cdr press enter and say here use.iso okay that's it so this is it now you have a bootable ISO and what it, what you will do here is just copy it to your Windows machine. So I'm just going to let that do it for a couple of minutes and we'll come back as soon as it's loaded and I'll demonstrate how the boot up procedure works. Okay, great. So now notice in my Windows on my Windows desktop, I have the newly created lion1.iso. And uh, just a quick little demo OS system. This is kind of a neat feature of the launchpad. Uh, I'm not too big on launchpad because I'm used to Quicksilver, which I've yet to find out whether it works on Lion, but uh, for those times where you just need a quick little visual of some programs, you can just do that. Uh, so overall it's a nice little feel of iOS, but uh, not necessarily for everyone. So what I will do right now is power down the system and the other cool feature it has is to save all of the windows that are open. So for example, it will save my Safari, my Finder and probably load up my uh, destination for my, uh, my Windows system as well as the terminal. In any case, I'm going to shut it down and I will set up my windows to use the newly generated uh, lion1.iso image. Okay, so uh, that's my snow leopard. Right, here we go. So I think it is currently suspended. What I will do is I will exit out of suspension because I'm, I will start the install from my lion.iso and I'm going to mount the lion1.iso and demonstrate that it actually works. So I'm going to pause it for a second. Okay, so this is just a demo of uh, the installation 
as I had paused it with the lion.iso, which is the bootable ISO. Now, uh, if I go back, what you will see is the original install uh, screen. Well, not the original, this is the screen to choose the language. And then the, the rest of the procedures are pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to power down this virtual machine and I will switch the ISO images. So here we go. I'm going to switch from lion.iso to lion1.iso. Notice they're pretty much identical size because I've just recreated the steps. And here we go, lion1.iso. This is unchanged. For the monitor settings, I've just set it to one monitor accelerated graphics and the rest of these are modifiable. So let's see what this does. When I use the original lion.iso disk, it actually took close to five minutes to bring up the install procedure. Uh, maybe it'll take a little less time this time around, but if it does take a little longer, I'm just going to pause it and we'll come back to it. So notice Usually, uh, it would sit here for a couple of minutes and then bring up the white screen with the spinning beach ball. If you don't run the uh, the VMware patch uh, Windows.bat files, so those are necessary. I did make a backup of my uh, VMware workstation folders, but that wasn't necessary. So it looks like again this is going to take some time. I'm just going to pause it, and we'll come back to it. Oh, never mind. Uh, here we go. Seems to be a little faster this time around. Perfect. And it's not tracking my mouse. And looks like, here we go, install Mac OS X. And I already, um, actually I didn't even need to modify the partition table here. But let's just take a look at it. So this is the original VMDK that came uh, with the image. Uh, with the download of the necessary files. I didn't modify it. It's still called Macintosh. I like mine to be called Lion or Snow Leopard or whatever. So close that and in fact I'll just let this install continue. One thing to note is that the customize doesn't do anything for me. In fact, it just it's all blanks. So I don't know what's going to happen when the, the actual CD comes out or the actual DMG comes out. But right now it's all blank. So here we go. I'm just going to hit install. And notice that it will take you about 20 minutes, maybe less. And I'll come back when this, is proce this procedure is done. Okay, so I figured I'd show you that it is now finishing up the installation and it will give you a green check mark showing that it has finally installed properly. So let me just uh, wrap up this procedure here. Just wanted you guys to see that it actually did install correctly from the newly generated ISO image. And uh, hopefully this last minute is not going to drag out into 10. So maybe I will just pause it one more time. Okay, so there you go, uh, installation completed, and now it'll automatically just restart, and hopefully we'll get a nice uh, view of Lion. So here we go, this is now the new uh, boot image, for some reason it's different for me from the Snow Leopard and from Leopard, but nevertheless, it looks like it's booting up right now. I'm pretty sure that the hard drive is supposed to be the first uh, the first one. Let me just check. Yes, so it's booting from the hard drive right now and not from the CD. So it looks like we'll be uh, seeing some Lion right now. So let me just complete the boot up procedure and I'll come back in a second. Okay, so here we go the white screen. Um, here just select all your parameters. I'm just going to randomly choose some information here. 
yes, sure. Don't transfer anything. I don't want to specify, blah, blah, blah. Continue. And just give it some random name. Let's say you want to call it that. And let's just continue. So there you go. You just created your new brand spanking new account. And I actually like the uh, intro screen for the system. You'll get to see it in a second. Uh, yeah, sure. Cupertino. Uh, start using Lion. So notice that the screen is actually not correct here. Or the screen size. But you can fix that with the uh, information from Darwin.iso. And uh, look at that schnazzy new image. So here you go. You boot it from the newly generated uh, lion.iso. And now what you can do is just remove that from the CD tray. And in fact, what I will do is I'm going to install the other settings from Darwin. So here we go. I'm just going to choose. Uh, where are we? So one second. Uh, here are my VMs. So this is the test. There's the Darwin. Choose that. OK. Yes, please. Just do it. And it should. And if it doesn't mount it, you can always just use the finder. So for example, I think in my original install, I had to use the finder. To actually navigate to my uh, Windows uh, drive. So let's just do that. Looks like the CD-ROM trade didn't work out too well. <coughs> okay, so you'll navigate to your users and then go to the desktop. I think I have a Darwin saved up already. So let me change the view. Desktop, Darwin. Oops, sorry. There we go. Oh, I need to rem remap the keys because the Windows key is the uh, command key. Anyway, here we go. Install VMware tools. You will let this install and it'll ask you to reboot one more time. And then I'll show you the procedure to make the screen work correctly. So I'll just do that here right now and I'll pause the pause the uh, screencast once it's actually installing this stuff. Blah blah blah. It's asking you whether you want to install and then restart. So I'm going to let this install. It should take a couple of minutes and then we'll come back to it in a second. Okay, so it just finished installing. I'm going to hit restart. And uh, let's see what happens with the screen. So I'll mess around with the screen a little bit and uh, we'll just show you after it boots up again. Alright, so notice already it's doing something funny with the images. But let's just uh, get it up and running and then we'll start messing around with the settings. So only have a minute left in the video, so I'll just make this quick. Uh, so here we go. Go to System Preferences. And then change it from the default uh, display, which in this case it's 800 by 600. Just jack it up to something like here, for example. Notice it already changed the screen, and it is actually not fitting onto my desktop. What I will do is, I'll just drag it like this, Notice right away it's resized itself appropriately to this size. If I extend it this way, it adjusts accordingly. And if I enlarge it to full screen, and look at that, it's already learned that this is the, the proper size for this monitor. And there you have it, uh, working display. Sound is not working yet, but uh, somebody will figure out how to do that. 
So hope everybody has a good time with this lion system.